uh, thanks to those who are connected to hear about the new release and patching model for Oracle Database. Uh, my name is Roy Swanger. I'm Vice President of Database Upgrade and Utilities at Oracle. The other name you see on the slides is Mike Dietrich, who uh, works for me in Munich, Germany, well known as the expert around the world in database upgrades. And he's also presented this topic in the past. Um, so just a little background on myself. Uh, I've worked for Oracle for going on 24 years now. I am located on the east coast of the US near Boston. So my time here, it's about eight in the evening. And I've managed the area of database upgrade and utilities in the uh, database development organization for a bit over 15 years now. So this is an area that I've been in for quite a while. Now, what we're going to be talking about is kind of all of the stuff that is around the uh, the new numbering scheme and everything that implies for the Oracle database. And the first thing you notice when you approach Oracle database now is that the numbering leapt from 12.2 up to release 18, which came out this year. And the first part of this is that it's a departure from the old dot one dot two kind of cadence for our releases what other com companies like say intel they t refer to their tick and talk release where the the tick is the big release and then the talk is an incremental update and that's kind of the way we had always looked at our releases in the past where the dot one release would have the major structural functional changes and the dot two release would be more about functional completeness. And we've gone to more of a year-based release model now. So that's why we have 18 came out in 2018, 19 is due out in 2019, and so on. So the first thing you'll notice is that we get away or we're trying to get away from this idea of there being the first and second release. Uh, that is something that dates way back from the times of even things like 8.0, versus 8i, where the, the first release was one with so much change that a lot of people wouldn't adopt it. The second one was more stable and so on. But what we found is really starting with 11.1, that the dot one releases were very much production ready. We had lots of customers live on 11.107, for example. We have tens of thousands live on 12.102. And getting out of that dot one dot two release cadence really made a lot of sense for both us and for customers. And one of the goals of this new release model and the patching part of it is to have fewer one off patches in your database. Uh, reason for that is that one off patches are just a real pain to manage and they're actually riskier than bundle patches on the whole. The, chance of having a regression in a one-off patch is much higher as a percentage of, uh, on say, a per bug fix rate than the chance of regressions in a bundle patch. Uh, the reason for that is our bundle patches get tested altogether. So when we have this set of 50 or 100 or more patches that are all tested and developed together, that's a lot better than applying a one-off patch that may have been originally developed for someone else's environment, maybe even a whole other operating system, uh, very different from the environment that you're working in. <clears throat> now, we can't talk about the release model without first talking about the lifetime support policies. And what you see here is kind of an overview of 11.2.12.1 and then our newer release numbers showing in the dark blue the period of premier support and then the lighter blue is a period where in some cases we've waived the fee for extended support and then the paid extended support period. Now this is actually a little bit misleading here because when we had say 11.2 and we had five years of premier support that five years was for 11.2 as a whole and for say the first release 11201 you actually only had support for one year after the first patch that came out and then when 11202 came out that would get support for two years after the next patch set and so on so there's a lot of 
patch set releases that you don't see listed here for 11.2 and 12.1. And that's really important because 18 or say 12.201, 12.201 is the base release of 12.2. 18 is actually just 12.202 with a new name. We didn't go to this new numbering scheme until maybe 45 days before uh, 12.202 was due to release. So 18C is literally just 12.202 in new clothes. And 19 was also under development at the time. 19C is really 12.203 by a different name. So that's very important to consider when we look at the patching and what release you might upgrade to as we go along. Now, we have not gotten rid of this idea of release families either. There will still be times when, uh, when we introduce a major change. It may not happen as frequently as it has in the past because, let's face it, databases have matured. There's a lot of functionality that's in there now. And yes, we will still have major functionality, major structural changes like, say, multi-tenant, which went into 12.1. But we expect that to be a lot less frequent going forward and that's one reason we've gone to these annual smaller releases but it's important to note that 18 and 19 are still considered to be part of the 12.2 release family for several purposes one of them is for lifetime support if you line up the 12.2 release the original plan for five years of premier support and three years of extended support that is exactly what you're seeing when you go from 12 to a 1 to 18 to 19 and 19 getting three years of extended support at the end. It's no coincidence that that is exactly the same as 12 to because that was the plan. 19 is 12 to 03 it is essentially the terminal patch set for the 12 to release. Another thing that isn't on the slide here, by the way, is that the default compatible setting for 18 and for 19 is 12.2. That is the base family compatible setting. So that's why when you uh, create a 19 database, by default, it will have compatible set to 12.2. Now the annual releases, as I mentioned, 18 and 19 are really the same as what we had as patch sets in the past. So if we equate that support period of three years, give or take, of support for 18, that's really exactly what you had for, say, 11.202 or 11.203. In those cases, the patch set release got two years of support after the next patch set came out. We're doing exactly the same thing for these annual releases. If you're on 12.201 right now, what it gets is two years of support after 18C is released on whatever platform you're on. So that clock started ticking when we released 18C on premises for Linux and Solaris a few weeks ago. So actually, in this case, you get more support for 12201 than you would have had under the old release model. And then for 18 and 19, it's the same as what you had for patch set releases previously. And as you've seen for 19C, we do have the concept of a long-term support release. We know that customers don't necessarily want to upgrade every two or three years. Sometimes you want your system to just get stable. You want to sit on it for four or five years. Um, you may want to pay for extended support. Or if you have a ULA, it's, the extended support is going to be included in your universal license agreement, and you can if you say upgrade to 19C, you'll be able to use that until 2025 and still get your quarterly patches, your back ports, uh, your one-off fixes, and so on. And the last clarification on all of this information about things like release dates is that for 12.2, for 18, same is going to be true for 19 and going forward, the initial availability of our releases is in the Oracle Cloud. The next set of availability is on our engineered systems. And then finally, it gets made available for download on other platforms or on kind of general hardware after about six months. Now, the reason for that is very simple. 
the cloud is the most controlled environment that we have. So when we initially release, we can do all of our testing in that very controlled environment, make sure everything works there, but we don't have to worry about all the, the vagaries and the differences between different platforms. There are certain platforms, and I'll highlight Windows and AIX and Z Linux being the, the prime candidates there, that always have differences compared to the base platforms of Linux and Solaris. So those platforms and the more general commodity hardware do require more testing from us. They often require a few platform specific bug fixes, but there's no reason for us to hold up on the release of our base platforms and our engineered systems where we own everything from the hardware up through the operating system. We can release those first. And in some ways you could even think of it as being your chance to have a beta release if you wanna access it in the cloud that's very possible. So that's a, what we have about the release cycle, but let's talk about the numbering and patching and how that affects you. And as it says on this slide, the future is already here. Uh, in fact, it's kind of a, a misnomer to call this the new release model now because this has been in place for almost a year. We started this for 18C, which came out, well, it came out, um, in the cloud in Jan uh, January of last year. And this time last year is when we were finalizing on uh, finalizing this release model, the numbering and so on. So our new number format has, it has three fields to it. And if you think of the old number format, like uh, say 12102, it had five fields where you had the major release, the minor release, the middle field, the you know, the zero in 12102 was reserved for certain special releases. The fourth was the patch set, and then the fifth field is your quarterly uh, patch number, like your PSUs, your bundle patches, and so on. Well, now we have a three number format. The first number is the year for the release. The second is the update number. The third is the revision, and I'll I'll explain updates and revisions in a moment. So our base release, 18.1.0. That means 2018, the very first release, the dot one there, and then no revision on top of it. So we can translate the old release model to the new model. If we compare, say, 11.2 and 12.1 to 12.2 and going forward, the base release for the 12.2 family had the old number because that just happened, came out before we went to our new release model. Patch set 11.202 is the equivalent of 18, which is, I've already said, it's the equivalent of being 12.202. So your annual releases are about the size of a patch set. They have a smaller number of, uh, of new features in them, mostly bug fixes, stability, maybe a few bits of what I would call functional completeness. Maybe not a fully new feature, but raising uh, or eliminating restrictions on features that were introduced in in 12.2. And then the last release of a family, that's like the terminal patch set. So in this case, 19 is going to be the last release of the 12.2 family. You could think that of, uh, think of it as being the equivalent of say 11.204. And that's the one, if you wanna just go to that last release and sit on it for several years, that gets the long-term and extended support. And then eventually we will start a new release family. That might be a, a version 20, for example. And that is when you might expect to see structural changes, such as the base release 12.2 had long identifier support. 12.1 uh, had multi-tenant. 20, I don't know what it might have in terms of major changes. If there are any, that would be the time we would make them. So all of this also affects how we do patching after starting with 12.2. Uh, but first, let's talk about how patching exists in 12.1, before 12.2. Before 12.2, and we'll talk specifically about 12.1 here, you had two choices. One is you could use PSUs, our patch set updates. And a PSU has two types of fixes in it. In a broad sense, there are two categories. There are the security fixes, fixes for the security vulnerabilities where 
You might see the vulnerability score, which tells you how severe it is. Um, might say how it's accessed and so on, but there's nothing specific about those security vulnerabilities. We don't want to publish all the details and give uh, attackers all the information they would need to go after an unpatched system. And then we have regression fixes. Those are fixes for the most severe uh, bugs that you can have, instance crashes, uh, data corruption, wrong results from a query, those kind of things. And those all go into the PSUs. Each PSU is cumulative. So a, a PSU will contain everything that came out in the previous quarter, plus potentially new content in both of these areas. There are times, it's rare, but it happens, where we don't come out with a PSU in a given quarter, simply because there are no new security fixes, no new bug fixes for a given release. That happened in, I want to say, January of 2017 for 11.2. We didn't have a new PSU, uh, but there have been one since then. Now, the second choice you have in 12.1 is to go with the bundle patch. What is the full name is the database proactive bundle patch. Now, the bundle patch in a quarter includes everything that's in the PSU, so the security fixes and regression fixes, and then we add to that optimizer fixes and functional fixes. Now, a couple of things to say about this. First of all, what are functional fixes compared to regression fixes? Well, functional fixes are fixes for bugs that may not be as severe as a regression, like they're not going to be data corruption, wrong results. They're going to be fixes that you want, and we include those fixes that are most commonly seen by customers and that are most likely to cause a customer to open an SR and have to download a patch. And the whole idea behind those functional fixes is to reduce the number of one-off patches that you have to get for your system because that reduces the number of merge patches you need. It makes it less likely that you need a new version of that one-off patch the next quarter when you get the new security updates and so on. And then there are the optimizer fixes. Now, if we go back to the PSUs, you'll notice we don't include optimizer fixes that would cause query plan changes in our PSUs. We do include them in the bundle patch. However, notice that it says optimizer slash off. And that means that those fixes are disabled by default. When you install the bundle patch, the optimizer fixes are there. But in order to take advantage of an optimizer fix, you have to turn it on using a fix control parameter for your database. That has two advantages. One is that it allows us to ship these optimizer fixes and have them available in the bundle patch so that if you run into it on your system, all you have to do to get that fix is turn it on. You don't have to go download another patch, have it applied to your database, maybe have a merge with other existing patches that are in the bundle and so on. So it makes it faster to get those optimizer fixes when you discover that you need them. The second advantage is that it allows you to have a shared Oracle home where everyone's using the same binaries, and if one database needs this optimizer fix, but another one doesn't, you don't have to have that patch turned on for every single database that uses the same set of binaries. And that's very important because it is often the case that an optimizer fix works really well for one system, but maybe breaks or hurts performance on another system. The optimizer can be kind of finicky that way based on what applications you're running, the um, specifics of the kind of clients you're using, whatever that is. Now, each bundle patch can also have new content in each of these four areas, security fixes, regression fixes, optimizer, and functional fixes. The bundle patches, just like the PSUs, are supersets with each quarter. So that means if you can only patch every six months, then when you apply the July bundle patch, you get everything that was in, say, the April patch that you skipped. So that's how patching works for 12.102. You have PSUs or you have bundle patches. Starting with 12.2, we change it a bit. 
and we have what we call updates and revisions. So we have our base release, 12.2, and then the first update is exactly like the bundle patch in 12.102. It has four categories of fixes, optimizer fixes that are off by default, functional fixes, security fixes, and regression fixes. And just like the bundle patch, each quarterly update can have new content in each of those areas, and each quarterly update is a superset of all the previous quarterly updates. So the reason we did this is what we found that customers who use the database bundle patch in 12.102 have about 90% fewer one-off fixes than those who use just PSUs. And having fewer one-off fixes makes your databases easier to manage and less likely to have regressions. Now we know that not everybody wants to take an update every quarter. Uh, we have, just like in say 11.2, we have customers who want the CPU versus the PSU. We also have customers who want the least amount of change possible because sometimes testing the updates may be time consuming, or maybe you just have an edict from your corporate policies that say, we only want to take security patches wherever possible. So in addition to updates, we will produce revisions for those quarterly updates. So in each of the two update or each of the two quarters after an update is issued, we will produce a revision. And the revision is a superset of that update. So revision one for update one has all the fixes in update one, but the only new content it has is security fixes and regression fixes. In other words, you're only going to get new content that is new fixes for security vulnerabilities or fixes for regressions that were introduced by that update. And the same is true of update two. The only new content will be security and regression fixes. You'll notice there's no new optimizer or functional fixes in our revisions. So that will go for two quarters. And likewise, update two would have two updates or two revisions, excuse me, and so forth. So this means there's no PSUs. Uh, the quarterly bundles are just called updates. And that means you will have the optimizer fixes available if you need them. It means you will have the fixes for all the most commonly encountered functional, uh, functional bugs. Those will also be included in the updates. So now we have this release numbering where the release number tells you what your patch level is. So I have 18C, that's the general release uh, kind of name. 18.1.0 is the first production release. If you're running 18.2, I already know right there that you've applied the first quarterly update. And if you say you're running 18.2.1, I know you've got the first revision on that quarterly update. So this means that the release number reflects your patching level. And here you see kind of the summary for how things will work with 18, the same thing that how they work with 12.2. So your version number reflects the patch level. It makes it very easy to know when you see that banner, when you go into SQL Plus, okay, now I know which quarterly update has been installed for this database. Now, another word about updates and revisions. Updates and revisions can have hundreds of bug fixes in them. When you think that we're going to come out with an update every quarter, each one is cumulative, after a year or so, you will definitely have hundreds of bug fixes in these updates. But they're still applied as patches, not upgrades. When you're going uh, from one update to another or one revision to another within the same release, in other words, that first field, 18, is staying the same. You apply it using OPatch. That means that an update and revision, either one of those is rack rolling installable. So that means you can install it with zero application downtime in a rack, in a rack cluster. It's also standby first installable, which means that you can install the update on your standby, let, let everything run for a while first, and you switch over 
apply it on the primary, run, uh, switch back and run data patch. Once we get to going to the new release number, 18 to 19 or 12 2 to 19, for example, then you're doing an upgrade. That means you're using either the database upgrade scripts or the database upgrade assistant GUI. If you want minimal downtime, you use data guard rolling upgrade or Golden Gate or something like that. So our advice, if you're on 12.2, while you don't have a choice, well, our advice is use updates. 12.1, we do recommend bundle patches over PSUs just to have fewer one-off patches. And 11.2, if you're still on 11.2, we recommend PSUs instead of CPUs. But really what we recommend is you should be looking at upgrading your 11.2 databases. Now let's look at the timeline here because this can get all a bit confusing. There's a whole bunch of new terminology. There's new numbering. It helps to look at it from a timeline perspective. So let's say uh, we're looking at 18. These are the actual dates for 18. Production 18.1 came out in January. And just like you're used to with PSUs and CPUs, our updates come out in January, April, July, and October on the Tuesday closest to the 17th of the month. That's the rule. So April 18.2 came out. Now at that point, 18.2 was not available for download on most systems, but you could get it for Exadata, ODA, uh, Big Data Appliance. And then come July, we shipped 18.3. It was downloadable for Linux and Solaris originally. It became downloadable for Windows just yesterday. It will be coming up on AIX, HPUX, Z, Linux. Also in July, though, we shipped the first revision for 18.2. So we ship 18.3.0. That's an update. 18.2.1 is a revision. And then in October, we will have the 18.4 update, and we will have revisions for the 18.3 and 18.2 updates. One thing to know is that in each quarter, let's look at October, 18.4, 18.3.1, 18.2.2, all get the same set of security fixes. So if what you care about is being current on security, any one of those will do. Now, 18.3.1 will have more functional fixes, and 18.4.0 will have the most functional fixes in that quarter but all of them have the same security fixes. And then come January, we'll have, we'll be planning on 19C coming out. Uh, we'll have new, one new update, 18.5, two new revisions. Notice that there's no more revisions for 18.2 at that point. Each update gets up to two revisions, no more than that. And then in April, on we go. In fact, if you look way out into the future, you see the prediction here, or projection. So you can't, these are not firm dates, of course, because, you know, releases may come out in a different quarter, that kind of thing. But what's important to note, uh, a couple of things. First of all, notice the end of patching for 18C out in July of 2021. Why is that the date? Well, it's because when, when 19 comes out, first it'll be out in the cloud and engineered systems. And if 19 comes out on all platforms on premises in July with 19.3, July 2019, that means 18 will have two years of patching from July 2019 until July 2021. And after that, you'd be needing to go to a new release to get patches. Another thing that you'll see here is that, boy, do we have a lot of patch bundles coming out in a given quarter when you go forward. Look out in uh, July 2021 and you have something on the order of a dozen. Well, that's actually not very different from what you see today because what's not included in this timeline is what we're doing for 12.1, 12.2, and 11.2. So if you look in, let's just say July here, where we have 18.3.0, 18.2.1, what else did we produce in July? Well, we had a database bundle patch and a PSU, for, or a, we had a database bundle patch and PSU for 12.102. We had the release update and revision for 12.2. And we had a CPU and a PSU 
for 11204 So that's six more bundles that you're not seeing here. In addition to those, we had other bundles that may have been available, whether it's uh, bundle patches for eBusiness Suite, for other application support, for specific hardware platforms, and so on. One of the other ideas behind the updates each quarter is that all of those other application bundles will be rolled into the quarterly update. So you won't be applying a PSU and a big data bundle or PSU and an eBusiness Suite bundle. It'll just be one update per quarter. Okay, so that's a lot of new stuff. Um, you might be wondering, what are your choices? What do we recommend? So here we go. Hopefully it'll be simple at the end here. You could look at this as essentially having two choices, updates or revisions. Just like in 12.102, you could say, I want to either use PSUs or bundle patches. The updates mean you take the update each quarter that gives you the latest set of functional fixes, optimizer fixes, regression fixes, and security fixes. The other possibility would be that you get onto a certain update, say 18.3, and then you go to revisions and stay on revisions after that. Uh, maybe because what you want, you're less concerned about having the most recent available fixes. You want ones that have been out there and tested for six months out in the field. There are other things you could do. You could uh, go stay on 18.3 for two releases or for two revisions, and then jump up to 18.6.0. Um, you could go down, stay on revisions, as I mentioned before. But what you don't want to do is go backwards to what was released in a previous quarter. We'll use this example. You could go from 18.4.2 to 18.6.0 if you wanted. That would be fine. But you wouldn't want to go back to 18.5.0. The reason for that is, remember, everything that is released in a given quarter, like the April one here with 18.6 and 18.4.2, every one of those bundles has the same security fixes in it. But if you went backwards to 18.5.0, you would lose out on the security fixes that were issued in April. So that's why you don't want to go backwards in time. It's a very simple rule. Look at whatever is released in a quarter. All of those get the same security fixes. And then it would be a matter of whether you want the newest functional fixes or whether you're just saying, hey, it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't need those new functional fixes. I'll stay on my revision. Our general recommendation is to stay with the latest updates. That gets you the the biggest set of fixes, it minimizes the chance that you're going to encounter a bug that's already been fixed for someone else, minimizes the number of one-off fixes that you're going to need, minimizes the number of merge patches, and so on. If you have a system where uh, maybe the level of testing for a quarterly update means you're only going to do that once every six months instead of every three months, then sure, apply a revision in the meantime to get the security fixes. You definitely want to keep up on your quarterly security fixes. Now, another thing to think about is how to adopt a long-term release. Uh, and this is something that a lot of customers ask about. Um, so let's say you've decided, well, you know, 19 is going to have long-term support. Um, so that's what I'm going to go to. Um, what you don't want to do in that case is wait until 19 is available for download. And the reason I say that is if 19.3 is the first version that's available for download and you, you don't download and start testing until that point, well, how long is your testing cycle going to take? You're going to have to acquire test systems. Uh, perform the testing, line up the downtime and all of that, it's probably going to be six months before you can upgrade. And when you realize that 19, the long-term support release, is really 12203 with a different number, well, all of the biggest features there, like long identifiers, which were added in 12.2, they're already there in 12.2, they're already there in 18. So if you're looking ahead to 19, our strong suggestion is start right now testing on 18. 
put it in your dev and test environments, figure out whether you want to uptake some of these new features in your applications, figure out whether the major changes are going to affect you in any way, and then choose your go live based on your business requirements. If you've already done your testing and you're comfortable on 19.3, go ahead, do that. If you want to wait another three months after you've downloaded it to get some extra testing, then go live on 19.4 in October. But that way you won't be waiting until early next year to go live or the year after to go live on that release and kind of, you know, that way you're getting the full benefit of that long-term support. So that's our recommendation on uh, adopting long-term releases. And the plan for 19, by the way, is to have a downloadable beta that you'll even be able to start with before the production release is available for on-premises systems. Okay, so what if you're looking at upgrading now? Do you want to upgrade directly to 18C? You can do that as long as you're on 11.203 or later. So 11.203, 11.204, and so on can all upgrade to 18C. It's worth noting that 11.203 and 12.101 will not be supported for upgrade to 19. So if you're still on 11.203, please do not wait until 19C comes out to do your upgrades because you're going to find out that it won't be available and you'll have to go to 18 anyway. So now is the time to upgrade your 11.203 systems to a release that will have support for the next several next few years. If you're on 11.204, 12.102, or 12.2, now you have a decision to make. Uh, this is actually a slightly older note. When will 18C be available on premises? The answer is all, it's already available for Linux, Solaris, and Windows. It will be coming for AIX, HPUX, and Z Linux. So which release should you upgrade to? The answer to that question is based on what release you're on right now and whether you have extended support and when you need to upgrade. So as usual with Oracle, the answer is it depends. If you're on 11.204 right now, that waived period of extended support goes until December 31st of this year. So if you have extended support as part of your ULA, and you might need to ask your account team about this, whether you have a ULA or whether it includes extended support, um, or if you're okay with paying for extended support, then I would recommend just wait for 19. Your wait will only be a year or less before 19 is going to be out uh, for download on premises, even less than that for Exadata. So at this point, you could just wait a few months, go to 19, and be able to sit on 19 for five years if you want it. However, if you don't have extended support, then you might want to be thinking about upgrading to 18C now, and then you could wait two years or so before you go to 19. What if you're on 12.102? Well, 12.102, we've waived the extended support period for six months longer than for 11.204, but that still only gets you to the middle of 2019. And that means that 19C will just be coming available for download when 12.102 enters the paid extended support period. So for 12.102, um, if you don't have extended support, again, you might think about going to 18 right now. If you do have extended support, or perhaps if you're on Exadata, you could just say, I'm going to go to 19. And for 12.2, if you're already on 12.201, hey, you might as well just stay there unless for some reason you really want stuff that's in 18. I would just stay there, wait for 19, and upgrade when that's available. So just a few uh, slides with important information about uh, MOS notes and how to get your downloads. The source for all the latest information about uh, upgrade is the database upgrade blog, which is run by Mike Dietrich. It's at MikeDietrichDE.com. The DE is for Deutschland, you know, the two-letter code for Germany in German. And there you will see among this, on top of this list of articles about the new release model and what are updates and revisions and so on, 
just all the latest information. Uh, I think today there was a post about an R-Man uh, bug, but we, we always have technical articles going up on the Upgrade blog. If you want the most recent patch bundle for your platform, there is an assistant note in my Oracle support. And you can tell this isn't a normal note because it's got the dot two ending. Uh, knowledge base articles have a dot one. Uh, and the article about a specific bug ends in dot eight. Well, dot two is an assistant. When you open it up, it gives you a choice of what kind of thing you want to download, whether it's a base release or the quarterly patch bundle and so on. And then it'll give you a choice, uh, say for base release now, it would say, do you want 12 to a one, do you want 18 and so on. And then it will give you the direct links to the patches. If it was for bundle patches, you can get a choice between the database, grid infrastructure updates, the Windows bundle patch. If it was the uh, base release you're looking at, it will give you the link for the base release. So that assistant node is a nice way to get the latest on whatever platform you're running. In terms of information, one of the most important notes in all of my Oracle support is the first one listed here, the release schedule of current database releases. This will tell you when we are planning on coming out with our next release, believe it or not. We now will put that in there. It also tells you the support dates for each of our releases, and it has information about things like our release families and um, and, and other things like that for patch sets and so on. Uh, the release update intro and FAQ, that is the introduction to the new patching model, updates versus revisions. And then for each release update, we have this these notes, and we give you the ones for 12.2, they're similar for 18 now, where you can look in the that note and find the list of fixes in every update and revision, cumulative, for each release. There's one for 12.2, there's one for 18, and so on. That can be really useful if you're wondering, well, do I want to, or do I need to take up this next update? Is this one-off patch that I have on my system right now part of the quarterly bundle in the next quarter? Those are easily answered questions when you go to these MOS notes. Uh, the master note for the database proactive patch program gives you the late location for all the latest bundle patches. Also talks about the difference between PSUs, bundle patches, updates, and revisions, um, as do these overview of patch delivery methods. Those overview notes about patch delivery methods uh, also give you advice about how much testing to do for each type of patch bundle. How much testing do we expect for a patch set and 12.1.02, for example, versus a quarterly bundle patch versus a one-off patch. And then there's a link to that assistant for downloads. So that is the last slide that I have. Uh, we always end up with the reference to the upgrade blog. If there are any questions, um, we can take those in chat and um, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Well, I'm not seeing any questions right now. Um, I guess the last thing I'll do is I'll just put in a plug for the Ask Tom office hours because that's another place where you can always ask questions. Um, we don't, we have stopped doing them monthly for the upgrade team, but we're doing them still bi-monthly. So every other month we will have office hours where either myself or Mike Dietrich, Bill Borgard, who's the product manager now for Data Pump and so on, will um, we'll answer questions for you and we'll usually have maybe a 10 or 15 pres minute presentation on a specific topic. So look for those announcements as well. And um, thanks for watching. And I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks all.